At the end of this video, you'll be able to read these small red glyphs which include Harakat, Tanween, Sukun, and Shadda. Assalamu alaikum. Hello everyone, welcome to the second lesson. It is highly recommended to watch the first lesson about the Arabic alphabet if you haven't yet, since this video is complementary to it. Today's lesson is an introduction about Tashkil. Tashkil is a way to give a word its exact pronunciation by using some special glyphs, which either lie above or below a letter. It is used very often in sacred scriptures like Quran and also official documents or children books. But before we start, we would like to stress on the importance of taking notes, which is a vital part of learning any language. Tashkil glyphs can be categorized into three main categories, harakat, Tanween, Sukun, and Shadda. Let's first start with Harakat. To build the intuition behind the convention of Harakat, let's start with this example. Can you pronounce the following sentence? Of course, it is you learn Arabic, right? Contemplating on this, we get the following conclusions. First, vowels take the majority of most of the words. Reducing them makes conveying of speech more efficient. Second, there is some kind of intuition which makes us fill in the blanks without thinking. This happens each time we see something missing in a word. Third, vowels are just bridges between consonants. Each time we stop at a consonant, we only need a direction to spell it. As in the following example, when you see the letters F, T, all you need is an indication of a direction that gets you from F to T. So it is either fat, fit, or foot. The idea of harakat is predicated on these three main ideas. Harakat are just three glyphs. Fatha is just a small tilted dash on top of a letter. And so that for the kasra, but at the bottom of a letter. And finally, Dhamma is a small wow above the letter. Let's see now how the pronunciation of a letter is affected by a haraka. A, E, U. A, E, U. A, E, U. B, B, Bu. B, B, Bu. T, 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 T. This is just an example for the first four letters, and it works the same way for the rest of the letters. As in the previous example of FT, harakat works the same way, a bridge between two consonants. Let's take the transition from ha to ra, as in this example. There are three ways. One can either say har, hir, or hur. The idea here is that sometimes harakat matters, as in this example, har, which means hot, but on the other hand, hur means free. Can you remember the Arabic vowels which were covered in the previous lesson? Arabic vowels are alif, waw, and ya. As you may have noticed, the pronunciation of Fatha is quite similar to Alif. Kasra is to Ya, and Dhamma is to Waw. So, what is the difference? Letters Alif, Waw, and Ya are often called long vowels because they are, when pronounced after a consonant, take a longer duration than the shorter vowels. Let's have a concrete comparison between the two. Ba, Ba. B, 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 J, J, G, G, J, J, D, 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 D. Can you now tell the difference between the two following words? Sad, 
صاد صد صاد What about this example? Can you tell the difference? لا 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 as we have mentioned in the first lesson means no تنوين is used only with nouns to indicate indefinite articles so when you see a تنوين on a word you can predict it is a noun تنوين contains three main glyphs تنوين فتح which is a double فتحة تنوين كسر which is double كسرة and finally تنوين ضم which is a ضمة with a small little hook at the end or it comes in another form which is double ضمة to see how تنوين affects a letter we will give an example of that letter but it works the same for all letters so let's see how تنوين فتح affects the letter then can be decomposed to the and noon then 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 which is simply kasra and noon then don don which is simply dhamma and noon can you pronounce this word give it a try wa la don ولدن 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 What about this word? ما عن ما عن In most cases, تنوين فتح is followed by ألف which is not pronounced. In this case, there are two ways to write it. Either to put تنوين فتح on top of ألف or on top of the previous letter and both writings are correct and here is a little challenge for you can you pronounce this sentence سمكة في بحر سمكة في بحر سمكة في بحر meaning a fish in a sea samakatun which means a fish fi which means in do you remember this word which was covered in the previous lesson it means a sea the next topic is sukun which is denoted by a small circle above a letter sukun indicates the absence of any haraka on a letter the following word is pronounced as bedron it is not بدرون with فتحة nor it is بدرون with كسرة neither it is بدرون with ضمة it is بدرون can you pronounce this word? it is a very famous word شكرا شكرا which means thanks what about this word? بيتون 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 meaning a house and finally we come to the last part شده denoted by the initial part of scene letter or simply a horizontal 3 شده simply indicates a stress on a letter and usually it comes with a haraka شده can be decomposed into سكون and a haraka Let's see a more concrete example. مرة 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 Notice how the شدة is decomposed into را with a سكون and را with a فتحة. Let's see the difference between a شدة and without a شدة in the same word. It is pronounced as مر مر in contrast to the previous example, which is مرة مر مرة Notice how the شدة gives more stress on را مر Let's take another example. Can you pronounce the following word? It is رد رد 
it is important to note that the order of harakat matters here. So when fatha comes before sukun, the pronunciation is different. So the pronunciation of the first word is radad. It is different from radda. Radad. In this video, we have covered tashkil, which contains harakat, tanween, sukun, and shadda. Let's now do a quick recap with an example of that letter. Ta. Ti. Tu. Tan. Tin. Tun. T. And in the last case, it depends on the haraka used with the shadda. We really hope this video was clear and helpful. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more awesome videos. And write us any questions, suggestions, or thoughts in the comment section. That's it for now. See you in the next lesson in this series.